Coming up on this episode of Focus, we share Tracy Yatsko's eight-year recovery from a life-threatening high school sports injury, hear how she and retired Philadelphia Flyers Captain Keith Primo advocate for concussion awareness. We'll also learn about the signs and symptoms of this potentially lethal injury from a physician at Good Shepherd Rehabilitation's Concussions Management Program. Then, reporter Grover Sokox takes us to a local diner basking in the limelight of a big-time Hollywood movie. Finally, we'll learn about the promised neighborhoods of the Lehigh Valley. Don't go anywhere. Focus starts right now. Focus showcases the people, places, and issues that matter to you. Everybody has a story. These are the stories that uplift and inspire right here in your neighborhood. Focus on what matters. You never know what you're going to see when you tune into Focus. Support for Focus is provided by the people of Air Products feel privileged to bring this programming to you. By supporting education and the arts, Air Products strives to improve the quality of life here in the Lehigh Valley, where we call home. You're safe at home at Luther Crest, a Diacon senior living community in Allentown. Our mission is to offer premier accommodations and services so residents can cultivate a healthy and fulfilling retirement. At Luther Crest, we offer independent living apartments and cottages, personal care, skilled nursing, rehabilitative services, and more. Plus, the Luther Crest team strives to provide each person family-like support. You might say it's like a home run. Luther Crest. News doesn't stop. We cover it 24-7, 365, because that's what our readers demand from us. You need to know what's going on, who's playing by the rules, or who's breaking them, who's winning and who's losing. The full range of the human experience plays out every day in the pages of our newspaper and website. The platform you choose to engage with us is your business. Delivering the news is ours. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brittany Garzillo, filling in for Laura McHugh, who is on maternity leave. A recent report by the Institute of Medicine and National Research Council found that youth athletes in the U.S. face a culture of resistance when it comes to reporting a concussion. The CDC reports that at least 1.7 million traumatic brain injuries occur each year, three quarters of them concussions and other mild forms of traumatic brain injury. One local woman who fell victim to that resistance now speaks out on the importance of concussion awareness. Here's her story. It was a high school varsity basketball game my junior year. It was January 10, 2005, a day I'll never forget. It was maybe 15 seconds before halftime. I was going up for a rebound, and as I came down, I collided heads with another girl. Instantly, my eyes blacked out. I had my passion ripped out of my hands. I could no longer be an athlete. And so it was really hard. As a 17, 18 year old, I tried to go to college. I lasted half a semester because again, I just, my brain wasn't ready. I couldn't keep up with things. I'm sorry guys. For the first time in eight years, 25 year old Tracy Yatsko knows what it means to feel alive. I feel like I'm just starting to live my life now. My teenage years were washed away. In her junior year at Tamaqua High School, Tracy, a standout track and basketball star, had dreams of going to college on an athletic scholarship. This was Biddy League, so I started playing in the third grade. Until one seemingly innocuous jolt to her head during a varsity basketball game ended that dream. The hit was so fast and sudden that nobody saw it. And even um, from a videotape, you have to slow it down in the slowest motion to notice that my head sort of had whiplash. Fearing she would be pulled from future games, Tracy went to school the next day and continued to play in the follow-up game. Tracy had suffered a concussion, her second in a few years, but like many young athletes, she downplayed the severity of her injury and kept playing. After the game, Tracy passed out in the locker room, never to return to high school basketball. No one knew that one concussion can lead to eight years of sickness or a disability. This was the start of an eight-year journey in and out of hospitals and doctor's offices as Tracy battled with post-traumatic stress, depression, and disabling migraines that left her confined to her couch. I woke up with it 
and I dealt with it all day. And then at night, I prayed that I would just sleep and I would stay asleep because I didn't want to wake up because of the pain was so bad. At one point, Tracy was taking 30 pills a day, hoping the pain would subside. I took a lot of pills for many years. I mean, it was just, it seemed like it was the only treatment um, because doctors didn't really understand what was wrong with me. There was something inside of me that knew she was fighting for her life and I had to make sure she won that fight. Tracy is one of thousands of youth athletes each year that suffer from concussive injuries. A recent report from the Institute of Medicine and National Research Council found that in some sports, reported concussions are higher among high school athletes than college. They occur most frequently in football, men's lacrosse, soccer, wrestling, ice hockey, and women's basketball. According to the CDC, during the last decade, the U.S. Emergency Department visits for sports and recreation-related traumatic brain injuries, including concussions, increased 60% among children and adolescents. When you suffer a concussion or hit your head, you become dazed, you become confused. Since her injury, Tracy advocates for concussion awareness. She was featured in a public service announcement for the CDC. If you think you have a concussion, don't hide it. Report it and was a spokesperson for Pennsylvania's Safety in Youth Sports Act that was passed in July of 2012. The law has very specific requirements. A coach must remove a player as soon as the symptoms of concussive injury uh, appear, and the player cannot return to play until he's been cleared by a healthcare professional. The heightened awareness comes from the marquee athletes, the Eric Lindros, the Keith, Keith Primos, players who have had their careers cut short because of concussive injury. Keith Primo, a two-time NHL All-Star and former captain of the Philadelphia Flyers, knows the consequences of concussions all too well. After his fourth documented concussion in 2005, Keith was forced to retire at the age of 34. I was out on the ice practicing with the guys, came into the locker room afterwards, was talking to athletic therapist Jim McCross and telling him, you know, I'm almost there, I feel well, I feel good, I feel better, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to be ready for camp. And, kind of let me uh, you know, talk my way through it, and, and at that point he just looked at me and said, you know what, Keith, uh, you know, your efforts have been valiant and we appreciate uh, your hard work, but I'll never give you permission to step foot on the ice again. His reaction? Relief. Yeah, I, I, this, my sense was uh, if somebody hadn't done it for me, I would have continued to try, and, and I would have just been continuing to put myself in harm's way. Through his foundation, Stop Concussions, Keith aims to educate others on the cause, effects, and consequences of concussion and neurotrauma injuries. If you don't feel right, you probably aren't right. Um, and we have to heed those warning signs because it's so difficult to self-diagnose, but we, we also should understand how we feel when we're 100%. And, and uh, as long as we continue to protect our children and understand that it is a real injury, it, it can be catastrophic at times, um, then uh, we're, we're doing the right thing, we're heading down the right path. Earlier this year, Tracy found her path to recovery. It led to Dr. Victor Pedro, a chiropractic neurologist in Rhode Island, where she underwent cortical integrative therapy. Tracy's symptoms subsided after only a few months of what is called brain training. Today, she believes she is cured. To see her enjoying life for the first time in 2013, I'll never forget this year, ever. Tracy's love for basketball remains, but she has yet to play competitive basketball since the accident. Unfortunately, there's a lot of Tracy's out there, but we as parents, as coaches, as whoever we are, we need to pay attention to the signs and protect our children. Tracy hopes to finish college someday. In the meantime, she continues to spread the message to young and old athletes alike that it's better to miss a few games than to put your life at risk. To continue this conversation further, I'm now joined by Dr. Kyle Klitsch, a physical medicine and rehabilitation physician who specializes in concussions and traumatic brain injuries at Good Shepherd Rehabilitation in Allentown. Dr. Klitsch, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, concussions and traumatic brain injuries, I mean, we're hearing this a lot in the news recently. We're hearing it in the NFL, the MLB, the NHL. We just heard from Keith Primo. Um, you know, this is something that doesn't just happen to professional athletes. It happens to athletes of all kind and even beyond people who play sports. Just so we're on the same playing field, what is the definition of a concussion? So a concussion is a form of a traumatic brain injury. Um, it can occur from blows to the head, blows to the neck, 
really any biomechanical force uh, that can shake the brain or twist the brain inside of uh, the skull. Uh, now, when this type of movement of the brain occurs, you can have tearing of uh, the cells and the cell membranes uh, uh, of the brain, ultimately affecting how these cells function. Um, additionally, uh, blood flow can be affected to these damaged uh, areas of the brain, um, limiting the uh, transport of glucose to these damaged areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and glucose is essentially the fuel of the brain. So when you have a patient with a concussion uh, who is exerting themselves physically or cognitively, uh, ultimately their fuel source, the glucose, is limited to these areas. And this ultimately results in the symptoms you see uh, with concussion. And what are, what are some of those symptoms? Because they can go, somebody who has a concussion might not realize that, that they're experiencing one. Sure. So uh, concussion can present in a number of different ways. Uh, you can have symptoms immediately after the injury, or symptoms can present minutes to hours after the initial injury. Typically with a concussion, the most common symptoms are headaches, confusion, and amnesia. Uh, but certainly there are a host of other signs and symptoms that might be present, which include nausea, vomiting, um, dizziness, uh, depression, visual disturbances, uh, sleep disorders, uh, and a few other, other things that uh, I haven't mentioned. Now at Good Shepherd Rehabilitation in Allentown, you have the concussion management program. Mm -hmm. What are some of those treatments available once you're diagnosed with a concussion? So, you know, it depends on the patient. Um, uh, we have a number of different uh, therapy treatments that are available at Good Shepherd, depending on the patient's symptoms. Uh, for example, if a patient comes in with visual disturbances, they can be referred for visual therapy. Uh, if they have balance issues, we have vestibular therapy available. Uh, if their primary issue is cognitive uh, issues, they can certainly uh, participate in a cognitive uh, therapy program that we have available at Good Shepherd. Now, as we mentioned before, this isn't just for sports injuries. I mean, no. you can have a fall, you can be assaulted, it could be a car accident, many ways that you can get a concussion. Sure. Um, what are the impacts of having, a, having multiple concussions? So uh, this is an area that's been in the media a lot. Uh, there are a number, number of high-profile athletes that have uh, suffered from multiple concussions. Um, some long-term effects can certainly be uh, attributed to multiple concussions, including uh, mild cognitive deficits long-term, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, post-concussion syndrome. Um, in addition to that, multiple concussions can put uh, people at risk for uh, another concussion at a higher risk, and uh, as concussions increase, that risk can further increase. Um, perhaps one of the most dangerous things associated with uh, multiple concussions is a syndrome called second impact syndrome, uh, which occurs when a patient suffers uh, another concussion before an initial concussion has uh, completely resolved. It can result in fatal brain swelling and uh, severe long-term cognitive deficits. Wow. Yeah. Definitely a fascinating topic and that we're yes. hearing about a lot lately, something we definitely want to keep our eye on. Yeah. Dr. Klitsch, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. If you've kept up with Hollywood's hit films, you may recall the Oscar-nominated Silver Linings Playbook. But what you may not recall is that its famous diner scene took place in Delaware County. Here's Grover Silcox with more. Grover? Thank you, Brittany. Today, we take a road trip to Upper Darby, just outside of Philadelphia. Our destination, a local neighborhood diner that got some big-time attention when a Hollywood film company casted it in Silver Linings Playbook. The film came out in 2012 and earned eight Academy Award nominations plus a Best Actress Oscar for Jennifer Lawrence. The diner also found a silver lining when people started showing up asking for the Bradley Cooper booth. The diner near the intersection of Routes 1 and 3 still serves up bacon and eggs, but now it adds a heaping helping of movie memories. Check it out. I don't know how to act with you when you do this. You can put movie magic on the menu at the Lanark Diner in Upper Darby. You want to have dinner at this diner? Box office stars Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence performed a pivotal scene in the 2012 Oscar nominated comedy Silver Linings Playbook here at the Lanark in booth number three. We'll get a bully with this, Brad. Great. We became a famous spot here. 
and Booth 3, now dubbed the Bradley Cooper Booth, has become preferred seating. It's unbelievable. They want the booth. They want the booth. How cool was this? I sat at the counter watching the now famous Raisin Bran scene on my iPad while sitting across from where it was shot. Do you want to share this? Why did you order Raisin Bran? On this day, Dolly and Ron Kennedy, mom and son from nearby Springfield, sit in booth number three. I ask them to perform one of the memorable moments in the diner scene. I can get a letter to Nikki. And look at it, that's good, the way you're looking at it right now. That's good. And action. I can get a letter off to Nikki. I can get a letter off to Nikki. I, I keep saying off. <laughs> this calls for some Hollywood style directing. Now let's do it for real. And action! I can get a letter to Nikki. Wow, that was darn close. <laughs> <laughs> While Dolly works on her line, Terry Renzetti, a regular patron, remembers a scouting party for the movie coming to check out the diner. They wouldn't say what the movie was right away, but then it slipped out within a couple minutes that it was going to be um, De Niro and Bradley Cooper in silver playback lining, silver linings playbook. Lillian Griffin, a longtime patron, got a front row seat the night of the filming. I said, I think we were sitting right around here when they uh, filmed the movie. It was uh, really un unreal. And uh, they didn't let everybody in for that night, but uh, we were let in and it was packed. Um, it brought a lot of customers in. <laughs> it brought a lot of business in. The Lanark, a local favorite for more than 50 years, already attracted a loyal league of local patrons with classic diner features and fare. On Thursdays, they serve um, a split pea soup, and that's so good. We come specially for that, and also the chicken um, uh, casserole, that's nice. It's a restaurant, so it's about food, but I think what ri brings a diner above all of that is the way that a person can come in here and still feel like they're part of something. Right. and that somebody actually cares about them or cares about what they have to say, and they feel good about coming here. It's my cheers. I can come in here and sit and, and talk to anybody I want or everybody, or sit there and just work on my puzzles. A good diner also offers what Randy Garbin, publisher of Roadside Online, calls a very public intimacy, where you can chat about the weather or deeply personal issues. I mean, diners are a relatively safe place to go, especially on a first date, because the neighborhood place, there's probably neighbors there, the windows are nice and big and wide open, and it's a good place to kind of feel out somebody that you're, you know, that you're meeting for the first time. Maybe that's why Bradley and Jennifer's characters, Pat and Tiffany, met at the Lanark. Because everyone comes in, they all have their own little thing going on. Slow down, Raisin Bran. Hey, Raisin Bran. Everyone has a story here. And every story has a silver lining. Can I get you? I'll have the raisin bran. Uh, and the second thought, give me a cheese steak. Yeah. Oh, God. For Focus, I'm Grover Silcox reporting. Thanks, Grover. One organization in the Lehigh Valley aims to ensure children have the resources and support they need to succeed from cradle to career. It's the Promised Neighborhoods of the Lehigh Valley. Joining me now is Board Chairman Ed Meehan and Economist Dr. Cameron Afshar. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much. Ed, tell us, what is Promised Neighborhoods of the Lehigh Valley? Well, imagine a neighborhood where all children enter school healthy and ready to learn. All children are on grade level and succeeding in school. All children graduate high school. All children go on to college or successful careers and successful careers. It would be a great neighborhood. It would be a fantastic, healthy, vibrant neighborhood. Absolutely. That would be wonderful. The promised neighborhood of the Lehigh Valley looks to uh, get residents and s various folks from uh, sectors of the community to work together collectively to ensure success for uh, children from birth through career. Wow. Now, you just completed a study for the Allentown Promise neighborhood. Tell us about that. Yes, the first neighborhood we're working in is in Allentown, and um, while we think about cradle uh, to career, we have to begin somewhere. The first uh, place that we're working is in, in the old Allentown neighborhood, 
and we're looking at early childhood as our first uh, uh, objective. Can we get every child in that neighborhood uh, one solid year of uh, quality early childhood education? So uh, as that is a goal, what we needed to do is have a better understanding of what the cost implications would be. We know that in the long run it would be beneficial, but what would it take to make that happen? So we had engaged Cameron uh, to help us with that, who was eminently qualified to uh, conduct the research. And Dr. Afshar, tell us about some of these findings. What did you find after you conducted this study? Well, we reviewed everybody else that has done this thing before, from New York all the way to California, a multitude of different studies over a length of time. So we have a variety of different data to look at and discovered that in most of these cases, the return is fantastic. Uh, in general, is about $7 for every dollar you invest in it. And this is getting children one year of pre-K quality education. As a result, not only it helps these children, it also helps the other children in classes because then the teachers don't have to slow down the progress of the class to catch up the kids who did not have the pre-K education or background to catch up. And it, we looked at all the way through college or career and it, the effect of it lasts all the way through. And the cost in Lehigh Valley is no more than about uh, a little less than $6,000 a kid. The return is unbelievable on that limited amount of expense. Wow. So, uh, Ed, tell us, what did you find out from this information? Where do you go from here? Well, quality early childhood education is important across the Lehigh Valley. Only about one-third of children who are eligible for quality early childhood receive it. In the Promise neighborhood, it's only about one out of four. It's only about 25 percent. Wow. What we've learned is, through the research that Cameron has conducted, is that first of all, we know it's beneficial and it pays off in the long run. Second of all, we realize that if you do it at a neighborhood level, if you do it collectively, there is sort of uh, a lot of other benefic beneficial uh, uh, factors that happen. You get a broader impact, a, a larger impact, because you're working in a concentrated uh, neighborhood. Third of all, the cost is reasonable when you think about the gains and the benefit. So what we'd really like to do going forward is to, to continue to, to uh, have a better understanding and talk with funders, talk with service providers about what we can do to provide quality early childhood education in the Allentown Promise neighborhood. So the big question is, do you believe that you can get that funding and that this can actually turn into something? Well, it, it's difficult when you think about the number of children across the Lehigh Valley, but when you break it down to a place-based approach, when you think about in a neighborhood, can we make this happen in a neighborhood, it becomes a little bit more realistic. So if we can talk about 100 children at around $6,000 per child per year for quality early childhood education, and we can track and measure the results, it would be a fantastic thing. I think it can be accomplished. Ed Meehan, Dr. Cameron Afshar, thank you for so much. Thank you so much for sharing this information and for working on some of these wonderful projects, Ed. My pleasure. Thank you. For more information about the organizations covered in this program, visit us online at wlvt.org slash focus. Grover, I have to say, sitting down with Tracy Yatsko and hearing her story, it really puts into perspective how serious these head injuries are, and they're, they're not to be taken lightly. That's right, and I think that, that they used to be looked at uh, in, in, you know, they weren't taken very seriously, or it seemed like an innocuous jolt to the head, but yet uh, it, it later led to something very serious. And life-changing. And life-changing and even lethal. So uh, it's good to see that now across the boards, uh, athletic directors, coaches, mm -hmm. schools, parents, they're all taking it much more seriously. Right. And in a positive way, something else that's life-changing, the Lanark Diner. Oh, that's right, and Silver Linings Playbook. And it's great to talk to folks <laughs> who, uh, you know, got their 15 minutes of fame or their at least brush with fame. And, uh, and love to relive the moments. Uh, well, they relived it with me, and I was happy. And I that. loved seeing you directing as well. That was great, Grover. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it may be a whole new uh, career for me. I don't know. Well, from all of us, thank you for joining us. And remember to focus on what matters. Support for Focus is provided by... The people of Air Products feel privileged to bring this programming to you. By supporting education and the arts, Air Products strives to improve the quality of life here in the Lehigh Valley, where we call home.